Have you ever wondered the Benjamin Moore equivalent color of this fair one ball color? Well, wonder no more because it's time to do some matchmaking. Woo! No, The Paint People isn't all of a sudden a really niche dating show on YouTube. Matchmaker is a new series idea where we aim to open up the world of different paint companies, paint colors, to other audiences. Pharaoh and Ball makes some awesome paint colors, but there is a barrier of entry to certain people because of the price point and also the availability in certain regions. What if you really like something within its color catalog, but maybe you're more accustomed to using, let's say in this case, Benjamin Moore products. That's what this video is all about. Like the video and let's get into it. While it's known that color matching is a thing, sometimes you just want the security of knowing exactly what you're going to end up with in the form of a physical color chip from a certain company that you can bring home. And that's exactly why I have grabbed five Faro and Ball colors that I enjoy and some relatively close Benjamin Moore equivalent colors. These are not going to be perfect matches, but it'll at least give you a very similar color in perhaps a paint company that you have more experience with. These are not perfect matches, but it'll at least give you a very similar color in perhaps a paint company that you have more experience with. So please, my fellow paint people, do not hold me accountable here. I'm just trying to give you options. First fair and ball color I wanna look at has an awesome name, not gonna lie. We have strong white over here. So strong. <clears throat> fair and ball calls this a cool white color, but ironically, one of its Benjamin Moore doppelgangers is classic gray. So apparently what makes strong white strong is what makes classic gray classic. They're both pretty close and will give you a similar vibe when you paint them on the walls. Although I do think that classic gray is a touch more beige and yellow leaning as a color, but they're definitely in the same family. You know, maybe first cousins. I love classic gray, which is why I really wanted to mention strong white here because they're both solid, versatile, off-white color options. On to our next color. No, I didn't pick this one because I'm self-obsessed, even though it is named James White. And it's sort of a lighter take on one of my favorite color types nowadays, greenish. If you know me, you know I'm really into incorporating green into my color schemes, even on the most subtle, minute level in the form of undertones. James White is a bright, warm, and creamy off-white, but what really sets it apart is that subtle touch of green present that was actually pretty hard to find a comparable for. A color that I found that has a lot of similarities within the Benjamin Moore catalog is Soft Chamois OC13. Another really great color with a pretty high LRV of 79-ish, but the main difference between these two is any green you might perceive in soft chamois is really just its creamy beige mixing with a bit of gray. James White does feel a little more pure in its saturation and just a tad more intentional with its green touch. I honestly love it, but I also really like soft chamois. So there are two peas in a pod, albeit separated a little bit, not a lot. Just a bit. But those are the only two neutrals I wanna talk about today, at least on the lighter side. Pharaoh and Ball is known for color, so let's get into some more fun options. The prolific navy hag blue is a beautifully rich paint color that is extremely popular for kitchen cabinets, furniture, anywhere you want a no holes barred deep rich blue color. So is there a Benjamin Moore blue that comes close? Kind of, but what you have to remember is Faroon Ball is really known for their high level of pigment in their colors. They're extremely rich in saturation normally, and when you're getting to colors of this depth, it's going to be tough to find something that's spot on. But I feel like I found something fairly close. Is it Gentleman's Grey? Or what about the venerable Hail Navy? It's neither of those. 2029-30 Blue Note has a lot of similarities to Hag Blue, although it's a bit less saturated with a teal undertone and a teensy bit more shaded with purple. So if you were looking for precisely the Hag Blue look in a Benjamin Moore product, you might be a little bit off with this one, but not by much. And nothing a super experienced color matcher can't fix. I could do it. The next Faro and Ball color to find a match for is another deep dramatic accent color that is one I am down for, and I'm sorry if I've made that joke before. It's downpipe, okay? The, you know, down, get it, okay? 
This is a color that was derived from the look of lead gray piping that was used extensively in the UK back in the old day. It's a darker color that I enjoy using in entire areas rather than in accent form because it is dramatic, but at the same time strikes a really great balance of undertones. It was really hard to find one color to pair alongside downpipe. So I have created a bit of a thruple with two slate grays that sit on either side of downpipe. You have Kitty Gray 1589, which has a beautiful dark silvery green undertone. And then you have Charcoal Slate, which comparatively speaking, takes a step towards purple territory. So when you look at the three, downpipe really seems to sit in between the two. Although I've used Charcoal Slate before and you don't really get a ton of that purple hue in many cases. It just looks especially prevalent when next to something that has green in it, like Kitty Gray. For the last Vero and Ball color I wanna look at, this is a color that always just jumps out at me whenever I see it. It's extremely fun, very bold and avant-garde, and it's just one of those colors that is visually stimulating to me. The color is called Arsenic, and it's described as a lively mint green by Vero and Ball. I have another pair of Benjamin Moore colors to match up with Arsenic, one that is a little more green and still has the same sort of tone going on. And then we have another color that is definitely more aquamarine and even a touch more cool and vibrant. The first one is Southfield Green, and you can definitely see the similarities, although Arsenic has more of a bluish undertone present. Eucalyptus by Benjamin Moore, on the other hand, has even more of that blue coming through, which gives the color a beautiful turquoise touch. So depending on which aspect of arsenic you prefer, you can pivot one way or the other. I guess it just goes to show you that these paint companies, they kind of got something going here with all these color catalogs. When you break things down in detail, there isn't a ton of redundancy and overlap. And even though a color may not look totally unique, oftentimes it is. These are some Benjamin Moore color alternatives to Pharaoh and Ball. Let me know if you wanna see more of Matchmaker in the future. Maybe I'll grab some snazzy Sherwin-Williams colors for the next one. Who knows? <laughs> I don't know. See you later.